Welcome to the Voice of Prophecy Family Reunion Concert, live from the Loma Linda University Seventh-day Adventist Church in Loma Linda, California. Lottie, listen to this song. Can you play that part? I even recognize that. Let's see now. I've forgotten all the music I ever learned that one year. That was very good, A+. Plus. <laughs> Another favorite of the Voice of Prophecy is... Ah, oh, that's a beautiful song. Okay, that's a little more complicated. Let's see, on the right side. But I know there are a lot of other songs that we love at the Voice of Prophecy. That's right, and we're going to have a great time singing tonight because I've got 100 plus musicians on the stage here. We're going to sing right now. Let's go. I feel like traveling on. Yes. The sun outshine, I feel like traveling on. That a heavenly mansion shall be mine. Yes, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. The so good to me I feel like traveling on Until that blessed home I see I feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling on I feel like traveling on My heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on I lifted 
at Calvary, for Jesus is very near. Sing it with us. If you feel like taking your coat off, go ahead and do it. But if you're viewing around the world somewhere and it's five below, don't do that. <laughs> we want to welcome each one who's gathered here this afternoon in the Loma Linda Seventh-day Adventist Church facility, and it's just become a wonderful living room of praise and a family experience for all of us. We welcome those viewing by television all over the world, and we want to give you a round of applause for being involved in a very historic event. Let's give a round of applause to those viewing by television a first event for our church. Amen. Thank God. Now, Lonnie Malashenko, come and introduce some folks that are special to you. You know, God's amazing grace reached out and touched the life of some pioneer immigrants to the land way to the north here in the United States, 
Canadian sodbusters they were who staked a homestead claim in Saskatchewan near the city of Saskatoon. Refugees fleeing from the Bolshevik Revolution. They were grandparents of mine, both paternal and maternal. A new life carved out on the western frontier. Then my parents came along, Joe and Ann, they started raising wheat and kids, one crop every year. <laughs> and homecoming is all about family reunions and we're here to get together with our own family again and dig a little deeper in God's love. Nearer to thee, nearer to thee, I want to be, I want to be. I'm gonna dig a little deeper in the storehouse of his love. Of his love. I want to shine, I want to shine with love divine. With love divine. I'm gonna dig a little deeper in the storehouse of his love. Of his love. Now don't you wanna dig a little deeper? In God's love, I'm gonna dig a little deeper. In God's love, I'm gonna dig a little deeper in the storehouse of His love. Of His love, I'm gonna walk a little more like a Christian should. I'm gonna talk a little more like I know I should. I'm gonna dig a little deeper in the storehouse of His love. Of His love, I want to do. storehouse of his love, of his love, I want to shine, I want to shine, with love divine, with love divine, I'm going to dig a little deeper in the storehouse of his love, of his love, now don't you want to dig a little deeper in God's love, I'm going to dig a little deeper in God's love, I'm going to dig a little deeper in the storehouse of his love. I'm going to walk a little more like a Christian should. I'm going to talk a little more like I know I should. I'm going to dig a little deeper in the storehouse of his love, of his love. Now don't you want to dig a little deeper in God's love? I'm going to dig a little deeper in God's love. I'm going to dig a little deeper in the storehouse of his love. Well, I'm going to walk a little more. Should I'm gonna talk a little more like I know I should I'm gonna dig a little deeper in the storehouse of his love
great joy we have the Heritage Singers here tonight. Have you been blessed by the Heritage Singers through the years? <laughs> well, they started as the Rose City Singers back in Portland, Oregon in 1967, and the Heritage Singers were birthed in that place. And since then, they've traveled into 50 countries. There have been more than 250 different singers as a part of this musical family. And in the last 20 years, they've recorded 70 albums. And I hope you have a whole bunch of them. And if you don't, after the service tonight, you know what to do. <laughs> I asked Max what his vision was for the future just before the concert. And he said, just to be faithful to Jesus and continue sharing the message around the world. God bless you guys. Sing it. You tore me up last time. <laughs> There's a lighthouse on the hillside that makes life see when I'm tossed. Oh, how it sends out a light that I might see, and the light that shines. In darkness now We'll safely lead us home If it wasn't for the lighthouse My ship would be no It seems that everybody about us says, tear that old lighthouse down. The big ships, they just don't pass this way anymore, so there's no use of standing round. Then my mind goes back to that one dark, stormy night, when just in time, I saw the light. It was the light from that old lighthouse that stands up there on the hill.
Another one of our most favorite people on the planet. Come on up here, Dale. Let's welcome Dale Delker. <laughs> Dale, tell us how you met Jesus. A little Methodist lady went to the quiet hour in Oakland. She was in California from Ohio to see her son, who was in a hospital. And she, she happened to stumble into the quiet hour. And she was so impressed with the atmosphere there, so she told her son about it. And a, a week or two later, when he was out of the hospital, he w happened to be wandering around Oakland, and he saw this, the quiet hour, the sign and the, and the place where they had their radio ministry, and he said, uh, hey, that's what Mom told me about. So he went in, and he was just charmed by the people. He felt that they had such a strong hold on God. He was from a Methodist background. His mom was Methodist. And so then he was my boyfriend. He was 19 years old. Ooh, are you surprised that I have a, had a boyfriend? <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> he, uh, he started trying to convince me that this is where he wanted to take me. And I thought, quiet hour? Who needs a quiet hour? Now, if he'd said a noisy hour, that would have appealed to me. But finally, I got tired of his heckling me, and, and uh, about two months later, I went. Stumbled in. I was taken there with a chip on my shoulder, and I just didn't want to be there. And, um, well, to make a long story short, I got hooked. That's and good. I was baptized in March of uh, 29 of 1947. That was before some of you were born, but not Jerry Dill. <laughs> now tell us what happened when you were contacted by Voice of Prophecy. Were you real anxious to work with these folks? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't. I, um, I went to a camp meeting at Lodi, California, and a representative of the VOP was there. And uh, he heard me sing, and he thought maybe I had some potential. And so... He called first, and then three other people called. I don't even remember who they were, but I turned them all down. And after the fourth turndown, I had an inner feeling that I was, I, I was uh, kicking against the pricks. There was an inner voice saying, hey, you let me down. And my mom watched me pace the floor and wring my hands and cry, and she says, you know who you remind me of? And I said, who? And she said, Jonah running away from Nineveh. If it bothers you that much, you better go. So September 14 of 1947, 51 years almost ago, um, I was about 10 years old then. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I went there, and you know, Steve, when you follow the leading of the Lord, it was a call of the no Lord. No regrets. No regrets. I look back on those 51 years. I've worked with some wonderful people. I don't dare mention names, but many of them are up here on the platform. And I feel so blessed that I've been, 
I followed that call, and I wouldn't do it different. Okay. Now, you've received some interesting mail. A letter poured in for me once. However, you've had some <laughs> very interesting mail delivered to some very interesting names. What were those names? Well, uh, the name that's the most common that I'm called, is, uh, that is not right, is Del Decker. Del Decker. Del Decker. Don't call me Del Decker. <laughs> and so I have to crap him, Delker, Delker. Well, another one is Dale Doker. And then one of my favorite was HMS, quotes, Doll Richard, uh, Decker Richards. Decker Richards. But what's the best one? What's the well, best one you've ever had? Well, my favorite is Bell Belcher. Bell <laughs> Belcher. <laughs> but, Steve, I don't think I sound that bad, do I? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, you had a lovely letter from a, 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 an Indian man uh, from, from India. What was that like? Well, this Indian this gentleman. Story, right? Yes, it's the last, last one. Of course, I have more if you want. Um, <laughs> Um, this Indian gentleman uh, got stuck on me and he started writing letters and, and, and came to see me and uh, he wrote a letter once and it said, lift up your optimistic and lovable eyes and peer into a new year of glorious uncertainty. <laughs> that was at Christmas time he wrote it. And another one was, the air I breathe in a room empty of you is unclean. <laughs> They have a way with words, don't they? <laughs> well, it's nice to take one day at a time, so let's get on with okay. the music, Dale. <laughs> okay. I'm only human. I'm just a woman. among men well Jesus you know if you're looking below it's worse now than then a pushing and shoving
Lord, help me today. Please show me the way one day at a time. So for my sake, please teach me to take one Submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from us. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love, this is my story.
the precious young people that uh, Dell was singing with earlier, Faith First. They're going to come and sing for us right now. Mark Judd, Andrea Judd, Shaney Judd, and Scott Reed. Let's welcome them again. Come on. your touch I can feel your heart as I'm lying here alone in the dark I hear your voice gently say come to me cause I long for your love like the earth longs for the rain I'm weary, Lord, I've wandered this desert too
There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood Sin stains are lost In its life-giving flow There's wonderful power In the blood There is power Power Wonder-working power In the blood of the land There is power Power Wonder-working power In the precious blood of the land Could you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Could you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, wonder-working power in the blood. Ray Turner, you find your way right up here, will you, my brother? Let's have a round of applause for Ray. Now, I wish we had all afternoon with you, too, but we only got a couple of minutes. Well, that's all right. All right. Now, tell us about the Lone Star Four. <laughs> the Lone Star Four were three Crane brothers and Ray Turner and myself. We were going to school over there at Keene, Texas. And Anybody ever heard of Keene, Texas? All right, all right. <laughs> and uh, we went west to find our fortune. And uh, we wound up uh, up there at St. Lena, took the nurses' training to stay together. And uh, the Lord led us on down to Southern California. There were women, and we met H.M.J. Richards, which is the father of H.M.S. Richards. And uh, he said, had us to sing for the sanitarium there. He was chaplain in uh, Sind Glendale Sanitarium. And uh, so we went over there to sing for his son. And he said, man, if I had this quartet, we could go places. <laughs> well, you know, we did. We yeah. went over the West Coast, and then they uh, gave, gave us a chance to go coast to coast. Now, I understand the Southern California Conference believed so much in you, they gave you a very lengthy six-month contract. How did that work out? <laughs> it's a tryout, not a contract. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, it worked out that they uh, hired us for over in the union, all, uh, all of us, all together. So we, uh, we, about that time, we had the, uh, the advantage of getting a call to KNX. 50,000-watt 50, 50, station. Amen. And uh, Elder Richard says, what do we call it? He says, well, I've been thinking about that. And he says, I, we'll call it the voice of prophecy. And we agree with that. And uh, we agree <laughs> with that. Now, we want to thank you for living almost 90 years because we really need you. <laughs> all right. And they're showing their appreciation for all of the history of this wonderful music ministry. You may be seated. Now, we want to welcome all of the King's Heralds, and that includes every bass singer on the platform right here. And the sound that you guys are going to hear from these guys is absolutely awesome. You can even have my mic now. Thank, Thank you very you much. You did good. Steve, Thank it you. is a rather significant moment this evening because for the first time in history, 
we have all of the five basses that have ever sung with the King's Heralds here tonight. We have, of course, Ray Turner, the first and the greatest. Then Joe Melisenko followed him. Then Jerry Dill came after Joe. And I was there for 15 years. I'm Jim McClinic, in case you don't know that. And after I left, Jim Ayers took over. So here we all are for the first time in history. Praise the Lord. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Oh, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Oh, let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer, we'll turn it. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our trouble, he will hear our faintest cry. Now, there might be some folks in the audience who are as old as some of us folks up here, and you'll remember something that sounded like this. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring, Jesus is coming again. Cheer up your pilgrims, be joyful and sing, Jesus is coming again. Los Angeles, California, we present the program of the Voice of Prophecy, a voice crying in the wilderness of these modern days, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Yeah. Coming again, coming again, Jesus.
Jesus is coming again. Well, today is an exciting, exciting day for a number of reasons. This is the very, very first time that my church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, has simultaneously broadcast around the entire planet Earth, live by satellite. In fact, there are seven satellites up there right now, linking us up with every planet, every, con every continent on this, this whole globe. But in addition, on this day, way, 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 way back, almost 100 years ago, on August 15, 1899, a little baby girl was born in Battle Creek, Michigan, and her name is Mabel. And she grew up to become the wife of a visionary man. He founded an international radio ministry, The Voice of Prophecy, and his name, HMS Richards. Now, this ministry is about to celebrate its 70th year of continuous radio outreach. And here is Mabel Richards, 99 years of age. believe it today August 15 you're 99 years young absolutely <laughs> <laughs> we're happy you can be with us today no. ha have you ever had a birthday party with so many people never 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 your family's right here to support you too we love you much thank you just look what we have for you it's an old radio does that bring back any memories oh, at all yes of course it does oh boy yes Mabel the world satellite audience is honored that you came just for this moment and we're all going to join in wherever you're located whatever you're watching church or satellite here in Loma Linda California on this platform listen as we sing together happy birthday to Mabel happy birthday. Would the Richards family stand, please? All of the Richards. Right here is the Richards family. And one of these days, very soon, you watch for it, the daughter Gigi, Virginia Kaysen, is working on a book. And you watch when it comes out. Mabel, Mabel, set the table. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mabel Richards. Because we're a family, right? And these folks are so dear. When one has a heartache, we all share a tear and rejoice. 
rejoice in this victory in this family so deep. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join us with Jesus as we travel. Chuck, many great songs have been birthed through Valley experiences, and the marvelous song you're going to share with us tonight is no exception. Tell us the story. Hope again, I'm an emotional guy. <laughs> well, our uh, family uh, started a gospel music ministry almost as soon as the kids were born. I was amazed. Uh, Donna had these kids singing before they could walk. She said it was because we couldn't afford a boat. <laughs> Diane was uh, 12. I'd hold Carly in my arm and we'd gather around a microphone. sing praises. We were out planting our garden in the spring. Diane stepped on something sharp in the ground and uh, Donna rushed her to the doctor and they patched her up and said everything was going to be fine. But it wasn't. And a few weeks later, <laughs> we had a funeral. And God, in His love, Look down on this little family. And gave us a song. Let's try to sing it. But the 
is one, only one, who can give you courage and strength to carry on. Never give up, Jesus is coming, it's the darkest. I've seen the name of Jesus melt the hearts of sin-hardened men and derelicts been transformed and the light of hope put back into the eyes of a hopeless child. At the name of Jesus, hatred and bitterness turn to love and forgiveness and arguments cease. I've sat beside 
a dying saint, her body just racked with pain, who in those final fleeting seconds summoned her last ounce of epping strength to whisper Earth's sweetest name, Jesus. Jesus. Emperors have tried to destroy it, philosophies have tried to stamp it out, yet still it stands. There shall be in that final day when every voice that has ever uttered a sound, every voice of Adam's race, shall raise in one great mighty chorus to proclaim the name of Jesus. For in that day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. <laughs> Ah, so you see, it was not mere chance that caused the angel one night so long ago to say to a virgin maiden, His name shall be called Jesus. 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 You know, there's something about that name. Jesus. 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 Jesus, there's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jamie George began violin studies at age five in his home country of Cuba. And thank God he moved to the United States at age 10. And his artistry has developed into serious proportions. He's traveled more than two million miles, recorded several albums, and won some very prestigious awards. If you love violin and you love Jesus and you love Jamie, let's bring him on with applause. God bless you, Jamie.
like a bird out of prison that's taken his flight like a blind man that God gave back his sight like a poor wretched beggar that's found fortune and fame I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name thank God I am free And if that doesn't bless you, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're so grateful to welcome the Heralds once again. Don Scroggs, Jerry Patton, Jim Ayers, and Steve Lang, and Jim Teal, right over here. God bless you guys. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Under the saving blood of Calvary Shed by the Lord of life for you and me Pardon my sin from bondage, I am free I am saved, saved, by, the saved by the blood Saved by the blood, yes I'm saved by the blood The precious blood shed on Calvary for you and me The grace is alive through faith There's power in the blood, there's power, power in the blood Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood There is power, wonder working power in the blood In the blood of the Lamb There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb
where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Trusting in his love, following him, I'll reach my home above. I am saved, saved by the blood, saved by the power, when the working power in the blood. I'm going to change the truth, my grace is the power, and I obey. I am saved, saved by the blood, by the precious blood of the Well, in just a moment, we're going to introduce this august group as they get set up. But way back 100,000 years ago, when you started singing with this group, uh, it caused a little that stir, was, didn't it? That was your day, not mine. That was my day, all right. <laughs> okay. Shall we start over? No, let's just go ahead. <laughs> tell, tell us about what it was like when you started singing with the Wedgwood Trio. Well, back 30 years ago, I heard this a folk group and I just thought they were terrific. You. <laughs> You're welcome, I'm sure. And uh, I had a, a dream to record an album with them. And I shared that dream with them and they consented to do that. And uh, we did an album called Joyful. And I will say that at first, not everybody uh, really was into this type of folk music at that time, in that era. And that's the understatement of the year. <laughs> but uh, many people were ready for that. And I felt that uh, folk music was legitimate music for us to use. I still feel that way. I felt that then, and I feel that way now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We got a lot of mail. I had kids coming up to me and saying, thanks for doing something for us. And you know, they wouldn't let us into the main auditorium in Portland, in, uh, where Oregon was that? Camp Oregon meeting. Camp Meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we went over to the youth, and the folks from the, the main auditorium came over to hear us. A lot of them did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Don? Well, Tim last summer, um, after 30 years, they invited us back. We sang for the adults, but they didn't want us in the youth tent. You were too. <laughs> You were too square then, huh? <laughs> the Wedgwood started in uh, Newbold, England, at Newbold College. And uh, we're so grateful that they're here tonight. And we just want them to sing and bless us with this wonderful music. God bless you guys.
singing, such singing of those old fashioned theirs. There was power, such power in those old fashioned prayers. An old fashioned conviction made the sinner pray. And the Lord heard and saved him in an old fashioned way. Was an old fashioned meeting in an old fashioned place where some old fashioned people had some old fashioned grace. I began to pray And God heard me And saved me in the old-fashioned way If the Lord never changes As the fashions of men If he's always the same Why then he's old-fashioned then As an old-fashioned sinner Saved through all time grace I am sure he will take me to an old-fashioned place I'm an old-fashioned in an old-fashioned place For many, many years, George Swanson has been a very valued staff member at Faith for the Day. And Dan Matthews, thank you for being here today, too. His ministry on the trombone is exceptional. So let's welcome George, and in the sweet by and by. <laughs>
Well, we finally come to a very, very significant kind of emotional moment for me and for our entire team here because we have had a wonderful, wonderful evening. But I want to thank you, audience, for being here for this very historic night for the Voice of Prophecy all around the world. And Steve Bolt, I want to thank you particularly for being our MC. God bless you. We do want to remind you who are here with us at Loma Linda as well as our viewing audience around the world that there will be videos, CDs, and cassettes available of tonight's ministry. And there's a toll-free number that can be called. Now, get out your pencils and your pens and you can write this down. Now, fumble around for a minute. I'll give you a moment, but write down this toll-free number. one eight seven seven hosanna H-O-S-A-N-N-A. Now, we can all spell Hosanna, I think. Let's do that one more time. one eight seven seven hosanna That's a number that operates, I believe, throughout North America. And we want you to get a hold of this tonight and share it with your friends and share the blessing, for we believe it's been honoring to Jesus. God bless you. Joy comes in the morning. You have risked your life. 